What's going on folks? My name is Josh and you are watching The Outdoor Dude. Thanks for coming back to the channel. In today's video guys, we're going to be talking about my budget rod and reel arsenal and why I switched almost every one of my rods over to braid. So stick around. Look at that big mama jamma folks. Alright guys, we are back. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Like I said, in today's video, we're going over my budget rod and reel arsenal. So let's get right into it. I fish mostly budget gear. As most of you know that watch this channel already, I'm on a pretty big budget. I have a two-year-old daughter and my wife and I are saving for a house. So I don't buy a ton of fishing gear. I might buy one new rod and reel a year and it's usually under a hundred bucks for both of those items. So we're gonna start right off the bat with, it's one of the first reels I bought when I got back into bass fishing and it's the Abu Garcia Black Max combo. As you can see, this is not the Black Max rod. There's a quick story about that. Um, the rod got broke fishing on a boat with a couple buddies. I set the rod down to help a buddy land a fish and my buddy's dad shot in there real fast to land the fish and he broke the rod. Just wasn't a lot of communication going on and just happened. I went and bought a Abu Garcia Next Generation Vengeance rod. This rod is actually pretty friggin' awesome. It's really well balanced with the reel on there. Compared to a lot of the other baitcaster rods that I've used in the past, this is very light. It's a lot better than another rod that I got from Abu Garcia. It's the 24 ton graphite. And I actually have this rod in the seven foot medium heavy and I have 30 pound braid on there with a 15 pound cold polymer leader. One of the, my most used setups, obviously I have a spinner bait on there. I like to use a seven footer when I can. If anywhere where I need to get a much further cast, I still might be throwing into some thick grass or some brush or somewhere where I might need to get a little extra leverage to pull that fish out of there and I have that extra few inches on that seven footer to do it. And guys, the price of this rod and reel, I got originally got the Black Max combo for 50 bucks. The rod broke and I replaced it with this rod and this rod by itself is 50 bucks. So I don't know, maybe call this a 75, $80 combo. I would still say it's under a hundred bucks. Next up, we've got the second rod and reel that I bought when I got back into bass fishing and this is an Abu Garcia Silver Max. And I got this on sale. I think it was originally a hundred dollars and I got it on sale for 75. I haven't changed anything about this except the black electrical tape where I broke a guide off and I just kind of taped over the rough part in the epoxy so I didn't nick my line on it. Caught tons of fish on it without that guide. Still works pretty good. This rod is a 6'6 medium heavy. I have 15 pound copolymer on here and I have a swim jig tied on. The reel is a 6'2 to 1 and this thing, it's a little bit slow. I like to use this for like swim jigs or crankbaits or anything where I can get away with winding a little bit slower. I like to throw on this. This reel is actually really smooth for the cost and I uh, I actually like this rod and reel a lot. Again, it's a medium heavy, 6'6". Six, six. You're gonna notice a trend with most of my rods, 6'6", six, six medium heavies, and that's because I'm fishing on the shore. I've got a lot of weeds to contend with in my casts. I've got a lot of overhanging brush when I'm fishing the creeks, and a shorter rod helps me get into tighter places and fish in cooler spots. It also helps me be a lot more accurate with my casts. Next up, we've got the next rod and reel combo that I bought. Again, it's about $75, $80, and that is my I lose American Hero. This one has some obvious battle scars, and if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up in the info card up here you so you guys can check out what happened to this reel. And let's just say these things aren't made to support 240 pounds, but if you want to see a big guy like me fall pretty hard, check it out. Anyway, this rod is a 6'6 medium power. It is an IM6 blanked rod like the Abu Garcia Silver Max. I have this one with 30 pound spider wire braid. I have a 18 inch monofilament leader on there and I have that tied on there with the FG nut. I have this with a monofilament leader because this is my top water setup. Monofilament floats, it's a better leader for that type of situation. And I have an incredibly long leader on there because I fish a lot of clean water, unlike the pond behind me. I'm usually fishing clean water and those fish get line shy, so that monofilament helps. Now this Lose American Hero is the highest gear ratio reel that I have. It is a seven one to one, which in today's industry isn't considered that fast, but for a 35 year old guy, like me that grew up fishing five four to one spinning reels this is really fast to me but i also am of the school of thought that the faster your reel is the lower the torque is i don't mind having slower reels as long as i don't have to sacrifice my torque next up guys it's another abu garcia vengeance rod combo but on this rod there's something a little bit different about this one i got a little bit of an unknown reel on here i got it on amazon for incredibly cheap and the review for this reel is coming up 
very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. This reel is a very average reel. Got about 14 and a half pounds of drag, I think. It's got all the features of your average cheap reel. Six, four to one gear ratio, except this has 11 ball bearings, whereas the Abu Garcia Silver Max has six ball bearings. This reel is actually um, surprisingly smooth for the cost, and I'm probably gonna buy a handful more just to have them around as backups and whatnot. I have a Power Pro 30 pound braid on here tied to a 15 pound copolymer leader and that's a probably a, that's probably only about a six to eight inch leader and because the knot doesn't go through the guides i just use the albright knot as my leader knot for that all right now this rod again like the rest are is a six six medium heavy and again i like that for accuracy i like how short it is i can really get this thing into some tight places and i could fish in a lot of places that i can't with a longer rod i like to throw swim baits on this setup i like to throw spinner baits on the setup uh, chatter baits on this setup i, I power fish a lot and I fish pretty pretty similar all the way across the board so I don't mind throwing the same baits on most of these rods except I'll use the longer rod in situations where I need that longer cast or maybe a little bit more leverage to get a fish out of a place extra grass something like that all right moving on to the finesse fishing setup if you guys have frequented the channel already you've seen me fish this a few times not a ton but a few times I don't fish finesse a lot so I didn't put a lot of money into the investment I have this south Bend Neutron, whatever this is. I got this rod at, an, at a bargain shop for $13 or $17. I can't, it was really cheap. It's a two piece noodle of a rod. It's not very good at all. It's a 6.6 six medium action and it doesn't have a lot of backbone. The reel that I have on this rod isn't even in production anymore. It is a 5.2 to 1, seven ball bearing Gander Mountain spinning reel. And I think it's like a 100 or a 1000 series. It's kind of small. Um, the, the bail would hit my knuckles sometimes when I'm reeling in a fish. It's got, I don't know, it's a, it's a good reel. It's got smooth drag. I just don't think it's the best reel for this setup. I got a monofilament backing on there and I have that paired with 15 pound spider line braid. So I currently on here have a monofilament leader and that's probably about 10 or 12 pound test. And that's kind of weird, but, I, but I, was throwing, I was throwing a Ned rig the day I was fishing that and I needed it to fall a little bit slower. So I, I put monofilament leader on there and it did the trick. These guys are huge and the rod isn't the best rod ever. I did an Albright knot on this and it works out fine for me. And I really like to use this i liked past tense because i really don't like to use it anymore i have another rod coming right up that's really taking its place i used to like to use this for drop shots ned rigs nico rigs and pretty much finesse stuff that i don't do very often all right guys next up is a rod and reel that actually made me start to enjoy finesse fishing again and that is a rod and reel that i put together as a challenge video i bought the rod the reel the line the baits the hooks everything to go out and catch fish for under 150 bucks i'll put the link to that video in the info card up here if you guys want to check that out after this video of course but if you guys want to check that video out be sure to do so it's actually a pretty cool video i caught a bunch of fish and had a good time filming it. anyway this rod is a 6.6 six medium and this thing is a little more it's got a much better parabolic bend than the south bend rod it's got a, a little bit more of a stiffer backbone than the south bend rod even though it is a medium and it does bend like it's a medium is supposed to it's just much better than that rod i'm not trying to bash that company i'm sure they make pretty good products but that one is just not it anyway i paired this rod up with an akuma stratus 6 and i did that because they didn't have Luz or the abu garcia that i wanted everything was sold out because of the corona situation everybody was out of work so they were buying up all the fishing gear there was nothing left this was my option 60 dollars reel knocked down to 39.99 i was happy to buy it this is in fact actually my most expensive fishing setup is a setup that i don't use that often kind of crazy the abu garcia vengeance line of rods is pretty awesome well balanced very light got nice smooth micro guides it's it's guys i'm not sponsored by these guys by any means but i do really enjoy their products abu garcia if you're watching hmm? This Akuma reel is a five to one gear ratio and a seven ball bearing reel. I got the 15 pound Power Pro braid on there and I have maybe about an 18 to 20 inch, eight pound copolymer leader on there. And that has actually worked out really well for me. I've got a drop shot here rigged up with a 10,000 fish Yoda worm and I filmed a video doing that as well. Great bait of that Yoda worm. I'll put a link up in the info card if you guys wanna see the video where I showed you guys five ways to fish the 10,000 fish Yoda worm with underwater shots and everything. But all right guys, so I like to throw drop shots, Nico rigs, Ned rigs, all that finesse stuff, wacky rigs, pretty much all the finesse stuff that works so well up here in the north. Guys, I'm a big fan of this rod and reel setup. It's my most expensive setup, but it's a nice setup. Feels really good. All right, guys, now let's do some talking about 
why we switched, why I switched every one of my rod and reels except one over to braid. Um, it's not 100% braid. I put a monofilament backing on there. I put the braid on there and then I run a leader almost always because I'm not a, if I was fishing this mud pit over here, I would probably run straight braid. I could get away with it. I have a bunch actually. Snap swivels, uh, steel leaders works great in here. They don't see a thing. But in most of the waters that I fish, I'm fishing clean to clear water. I need to be able to get this bait in front of some line shy fish. Even if it's just a six inch leader like I've got on this, it helps tremendously. I run 30 pound braid on all of my setup except my finesse setups, which are 15 pound braid. The 15 pound braid casts like a dream. It's plenty strong enough to fight those finesse fish. I got my drag set nice. I have not snapped my 15 pound braid on my finesse fishing setups. I've snapped my eight pound leader. I'll run an eight pound leader, a 10 pound leader, or a 12 pound leader, depending on what I'm doing, how slow I want that rate to fall, and how line shy those fish are. But I'm getting way more hookups running a setup like that. I'm way more versatile finesse fishing running a setup like that because I can actually tie up a different leader really fast. I don't have to worry about having an entirely different finesse fishing setup rigged up that's 10 pound and eight pound and a 12 pound and have three different setups. This one rod and reel here can cover all of those bases with a quick leader change. Same thing with all of my bait casters. I've got four bait casters sitting in front of me right now and that's all I carry around with me most of the time. The three of them are a 6'6", six, six, medium heavy. The other one is a seven foot medium heavy and that's just for extra leverage or further casts. Now let me tell you guys why I started fishing braid over air, over all other lines. It's much more sensitive. As long as I maintain bottom contact, I can feel everything. I can tell when my bait's hitting a rock or wood and I can tell the difference. I can feel when a fish picks it up and swims towards me. You can feel a little bit more. Plus, I'm, a, I'm not a hardcore hook set kind of guy. I'm a reel and sweep kind of guy. And with that real stiff line, that's all I need to do. Just a quick reel and sweep unless I'm frog fishing and I got that monofilament leader on there and I'll really try to hammer home on them because that monofilament's got a lot of stretch. But when I'm fishing straight braid to a copolymer leader, I can rest assured that, that as long as it's sharp, that hook's going to get buried into the fish and I'm going to get that fish. That's not to say that my setup and my lineup is complete, guys. With this rod and reel lineup, I have a couple more rods and reels in mind. I would like a much faster reel. I would also like to pair that up on a heavy, maybe a seven foot, maybe a seven, six, seven, three, seven, six heavy action rod so I can fit some of that thicker stuff and run like a 50 to 60 pound braid like a lot of you guys would run when you're fishing grass. Another benefit to running braid on all of your reels is longevity. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know why, but I backlash a lot less when I'm running braid. And with that comes not tearing out full spools of line. I've actually had braid on the American Hero combo last two plus years. And then learned a trick from a pro that I watch on TV. Let's say, let's say this braid is just run ragged. It's, it's, it's light green. It's lost all its color. It's a little bit frayed and a little bit old. That's only the top portion. There's a lot of braid still in left in the inside of your spool that is completely brand new looking and unused. You snip the braid off over here, run that off, tie it on another reel, open the bale on this bad boy, set it down, grab the other reel and reel all this old line onto that newer reel. And all that old stuff that you used to run, that used to be the line that was in the water and rub it up against everything and it's all sun damaged. And all that line is now on the inside of your spool where your new line used to be and that new line is on the outside of your spool. Looking brand new, tough as you remember it to be, ready to fish and throw into the thick stuff. I've gotten four years out of one spool of braid by using that technique. Also, like I said earlier in the video, by running braid on all of my setups, all I have to do to be a little bit different in technique is change up my leader. And I could do that really quick and easy. But now that we're talking on leaders, as long as my leader is short and I'm not running it through the micro guides, I will run an all bright nut. It's plenty strong enough. I've caught Northern Pike, caught three, four, five pound largemouth on that. Not five pound, not yet, but three, four pound largemouth on the all bright knot works perfectly fine. I will check it from time to time because those knots are known to slip. So if I have to retie it, I will. The all bright knot's super easy to tie. That leader line is um, super cheap when you're only using six to eight inches of it at, at a time. But if I have to run my leader knot, through the guides, I will absolutely sit down, take the time, and I tie the FG nut. I actually tie the super FG nut that I learned from Seth Fighter. 
It's the FG knot with a series of half hitches afterward to help lock it in a little bit better. Uh, maybe I'll do a video of teaching how to tie that when I'm, my knots aren't so dang ugly and they look a little bit better. All right, guys, this is where I'm going to end the video. Hopefully, you got a little bit of insight as to how I fish, why I fish the way I do, why I switch all of my rods over to braid, how that helps me be a better angler, and maybe you guys got something out of this video. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button right right there. Click the notification bell so YouTube notifies you when I do a new video. Otherwise, they will not tell you. If you guys want to see more fishing videos like this, click the playlist of videos I got set up for you guys right over here, or click one of these two videos, and I'll see you guys over there. Bam!